So you've wanted to build a home theater on a budget. You didn't know where to look. You didn't know where to start. So I decided to make my series of videos about shopgoodwill.com, which I think is a real hidden gem in terms of a used secondhand website that you can find a lot of good deals. But I realized I forgot to really lay the groundwork and really put in the rules and things that I'm actually looking for in these items on that website. And I started posting videos about I would buy this receiver, I'd buy that projector. And I talked a little bit about them, but I didn't lay out just general rules for people to apply to look at other items that weren't in those videos. So I put the cart before the horse, essentially. So here today in this video, I'm talking about tips and general rules that I personally would use when looking for items on Shop Goodwill or any other secondhand website. First and foremost, I just want people to understand these tips and these kind of rules that I'm going to talk about are through the lens and through the veil of what I want to accomplish in my home theater and my kind of philosophy about high quality items for a low price, you know, the best bang for your buck that you can get on these items. So it's not going to be the newest technology. It's not going to be the most up to date things you can buy in the world of home theater, but it's going to be high quality components that I think would fit in a home theater setting. So I just want to throw that out there up front before I get into any of this stuff. In terms of what I'm actually looking for, it's the major components that would build your home theater system. All the other smaller things or the really large furniture items, I think you're more uh, suited to just find locally, either buy them new from a store or buy them secondhand through, you know, somewhere where you can pick them up locally instead of trying to pay some crazy shipping price in comparison to what you're actually buying. Now, a big component of not only purchasing these items is to do some research. Research doesn't cost you anything other than your time. It doesn't cost you any money to research these items. Look into the specs of those items and really try and gauge which one is going to be the better deal for the price. And so I enjoy using websites like Crutchfield or ProjectorReviews.com, ProjectorCentral.com. You know, really just trying to do some research before you place a bid or buy an item on one of these sites, you really want to know what you're getting into and it will really help you build your knowledge base about what you really want to accomplish in your home theater and what is ultimately a good deal for your price point that you're willing to pay. A lot of people have it in their mind that if it's older, it's bad. That's not the case. Old technology does not equal bad technology. In fact, older technology, provided it's working and not broken, is actually in a lot of cases going to be better than your baseline stuff you would buy brand new today. So just keep that in mind. Old stuff is not bad stuff. In a lot of cases, if you find the right items, the old stuff is going to be a lot better quality than what you're going to find today. Going along with the old technology is not bad technology, I also want to say you want to look for reputable brands that carry a good name in the home theater industry. So yes, you can find some outliers from some lower quality brands that may have a random item that was extremely well built uh, for that brand that's kind of an outlier. But for the most part, I like to look for reputable brands. You're going to see Marantz, you're going to see Denon, you're going to see Yamaha, you're going to see Ankyo or Integra, JVCs, you're going to see Sim2, you're going to see Panasonic, you're going to see Roomco, Klipsch, or JBL, uh, Polk Audio, Paradigm, Infinity. You're going to see Oppo. You're going to see Rotel. You're going to see stuff like that that's on the higher end. You're not going to see just the regular LG, Samsung, you know, Vizio, kind of just lower quality stuff you can find at Walmart. You really want to find high quality, reputable brands in the used market. Both eBay and Shop Goodwill allow you to create profiles 
which you're going to need if you actually buy one of the items. And you can actually save items to your favorites list. And that's a really good option to be able to search all these different items that you want to get in your home theater and then just save the items that intrigue you or that you're really interested in in your favorites. And it'll actually stay in there even once the listings are closed. So you can even keep these items and see, oh, here's this receiver or oh, here's this set of speakers. They sold for this much the first time and look to see where they may fall if a future item similar to that comes up and kind of gauge your interest and kind of gauge your plan of how you want to, you know, put your bids in on these items for them later on down the road. So when I'm looking to buy items on these secondhand websites, uh, mainly Shop Goodwill and eBay, I tend to really like the buy it now options. You can find some really good items there and deals there. Every once in a while, the price on a buy it now item may look like it's higher, but then when you look at the actual bids on other items, it may turn out to be a better deal. Yes, it may end up being a few dollars more than what something in an auction may sell for, but it also may not. That auction item may end up far exceeding what the buy it now item is. So I always like to look at buy it now items first before I venture into placing bids on items. Uh, the only time I'll go head first into you know, bidding on a regular bid item that's not buy it now is really trying to get something that I know is super high quality or something that I really, really want that I don't wanna see get away. Uh, otherwise, I'm more judicious and I tend to look at buy it now items. Another really good option to look at, and it's more exclusive to eBay, not so much on Shop Goodwill, and that's the best offer listings. I always shoot best offers to people that I'm trying to buy stuff from on eBay. I mean, the worst they can say is no, uh, and you can still usually buy the item either through a bid or through their buy it now price. And you get on eBay five offers to send, and they can counter offer back. So I usually like to send best offers to sellers on eBay, just because you can usually get even a better deal by doing that than going through just the flat rate pricing or going through and trying to place bids. Have fun with what you're doing when you're trying to buy stuff online and don't get discouraged if something you want to buy starts to exceed your price point. There's always other items out there and sometimes missing out on the initial item you wanted will open the door to something else that you didn't know was available that comes out to be even better than the other item. I've had experiences with that in the past where I bid on certain speakers or on other things and it went past what I thought it would be. And then, you know, like a week later, a new item popped up that I ended up getting for a better deal than what I initially was going to spend on the first item. So don't get discouraged about missing out on an item. Have fun, enjoy the process, enjoy the journey of researching these items and trying to figure out what you want. Because you can really get caught up in all the minutia of really getting upset that you missed out on an item or really like forcing yourself to overbid on something. You know, really just enjoy the process, enjoy the actual journey of finding these items. So with that, these are just some of my pointers and tips for buying stuff online. This is kind of more specific to Shop Goodwill, but these can be applied to any secondhand site, whether it's eBay, Shop Goodwill, Facebook Marketplace, Mercari, all these different places that allow you to buy secondhand items. A lot of this stuff applies across the board. And so, like I said, enjoy the journey, enjoy the process, because that's what it is. It's not, you know, an end all be all, the first thing you see is going to be the last thing you see you know it's really a fun journey to go through all this stuff and uh, with that being said I just want to say thanks to everyone uh, for liking and subscribing here on my channel. I really do appreciate it. As much as it's a journey to go through and build your home theater, I'm on my own journey of here going through YouTube and doing all this stuff. And I, I really do appreciate all the positive support and feedback that I've had from everyone out there. Uh, I'm getting close to a thousand subs. I'm really pushing for that. I hope you know uh, everyone who sees this video can send it to a friend or somebody and maybe get someone else subscribed to the channel. I really would appreciate that. So with that being said, I will see you in the next video. Thank you.